All right, kids, welcome back. I'm Alistair Witten. And I'm Chris Doyle, and welcome to Sports School. Now that you've mastered the basics and you're comfortable on your bike, we're going to take it to the next level and show you some more intermediate tricks, such as grinds and lip tricks. All right, Doyle, I think first up is a double peg stall. A double peg stall is just your front and back peg just on the coping, body leaned in, arms slightly bent, so your body is in the ramp and your bike is over the deck. So I'd say when you're starting off, the first time you should do is maybe go a little bit faster than you think you need to, because you know that way you can just put your foot on the deck if you want to, just to be safe. But um, once you, you know you get up and you stall on your double peg stall, then you can either put your foot on and then maybe work on dropping back in, just roll it back in, and it's fairly easy. All you have to do is really lean, and a lot of the trick is that just that, like Alistair said, was just leaning. You got to keep your bike over the deck, and you got to keep your body over the ramp. Okay, now after you've mastered the stall, you're ready to move along to the grind. What you want to do is you want to approach the ramp with plenty of speed. You want to carve at whatever angle you're comfortable with. And you do the same thing we just talked about. You want to lean your bike over the deck of the ramp while keeping your body over the transition of the ramp. And you grind as long as you want or as long as you have speed to. And then you pull back in whenever you're comfortable. Once you've mastered that one, pretty much the feeble grind is the same type as a double peg, except for as you come up to the ramp, you just bring your front wheel onto the deck and just let it run parallel with the coping and keep your front tire on the deck. Same weight, different, everything's the same, you're leaning over, except for your front wheel is a little bit higher. And then when you come to jump in the ramp, it's, there's a bunny hop in, I think, from the feeble because you can, you can kind of turn it, but you might hit the coping and wash out a bit, so you're pretty much safe on just doing a bunny hop, lean in, turn your bars, Turn your body, lean back in from the feeble grind. You can also do the exact opposite, which is called the Smith grind. What you do there is basically you have your front peg on the coping while sliding and keeping your back wheel over the deck. Again, same concept as goes with all grinds is keep your weight over the transition of the ramp while keeping your bike pointed inward to the deck. And that'll keep you grinding and it's pretty easy to roll in. You just roll in like we talked about on a double peg stall. I think you keep a bit more weight on the front wheel because you, if there's more weight on the front wheel, your back wheel doesn't tend to skip back over the coping. It, it kind of moves with the Smith a bit longer and you can get a bit of an extra longer grind. But then, yeah, same deal, just lean it in and your, your front wheel's already in the ramp so you're not worrying about hopping or anything like, like the feeble grind. So you should be safe on that one, I think, Chris. Thank you, Alistair. And for some of you kids, if you don't have pegs, there's also a pedal grind. It's similar to a feeble, except for you just go straight up onto the coping and place your back pedal onto the coping. But then it's the same, it's the same motion of a feeble, so if you have to turn your bars a little bit more because you're more crooked with the coping. Pedal grind is a, it's a fun trick. Kind of destroys your bike a little bit, but it's not too bad. So yeah, pedal grind. Now if you're ready, I'd say the next peg stall you'd like to learn is the ice pick. It's um, definitely a little bit harder than your normal double peg stall or smith stall or feeble balance. stall. It's more balance, I think. But... Yeah, definitely a lot more balance. What you're going to want to do is approach the ramp at the same speed that you went for the double peg stall. Only this time, you're going to want to keep your front end up as opposed to keeping your front end down. And just kind of stall it out. You can use your brakes if you have to. Lean your body over the transition while keeping your bike into the ramp. You can hop out of an ice picker thing, or you can just slide it in, whatever which feels better for you on that day. And then same goes as a toothpick. This is a pretty advanced trick, really. You've got to throw your weight, and you've got to go into a, a nose dive. You've got to straighten your arms out, and you've got to put all your weight on your front peg, and have your body central with all your, your front forks, and, and all your weight over the coping. And then to come in, you've just got to muscle your front end in and then ride down the ramp. Yeah, and like Alistair said, the most important trick, for me at least learning, was to keep your arms locked, especially the inside arm. Keep that elbow locked, and you should have a solid toothpick grind. And then straight into ice pick grind, I think. Same deal as the double peg grind, the feeble, and the smith grind. You just want to come in with some momentum, go into the, as if you're doing the ice pick stall, but you've got a real push and like just like the manual when you're in the ice pick grind it's you're in the pretty much a manual position if you move your body your bike will move up and down and to make it go longer you can pump the cope in and, and pump with your body your brakes pretty much don't have a factor with this really because 
it's mainly just your, your back peg on the coping and then just when you feel like coming in you can just turn in and ride away. Now with the toothpick grind, that's real advanced. I've only seen a couple people pull this off successfully and do it well, yeah. but I'm going to go ahead and explain it anyways. The toothpick grind is pretty much like we just explained with the toothpick stall. You want to keep your back end over the ramp while keeping your arms locked and sliding along the coping. Now pretty much you're just going to have to rely on your, your momentum to keep you going. I think the speed, yeah, definitely the speed is a factor and just keeping your back end as far out because it's only going to want to drift into the coping and connect with your back peg on the coping. So the further you can keep that kicked out and just lock your arms and just ride the wave, I guess. Hey Chris, why don't you, why don't you talk about a tire tap? With the tire tap, you basically just want to go a little bit faster than you did with the double peg grind or double peg stall. And you're gonna wanna actually pop your bike up all the way onto the deck of the ramp. Now, what you, you're gonna wanna use your brakes for this one, so remember to squeeze in your brakes and keep the front end up like you did with the manual and stall out there as long as you're comfortable. Um, sometimes you're, you'll tire tap for you know, just a brief second or sometimes you'll stay up there for you know, five seconds. But as long as you're comfortable with your balance point, you're in the tire tap, what you want to do is just pop yourself back in, come in nosedived in the transition, and you're golden. Another variation of a tire tap is just actually sticking it on the coping, uh, what we call a fufanu. It's a bit more precise than a tire tap because you've got the whole deck to figure out where you want to do a tire tap, but a fufanu is just straight up onto the coping. So you ride up the same speed as the tire tap, but then as you come up, you want to just stare at the coping squeeze your brakes and you want to pinpoint your back wheel right on the coping and then you can pull in and you can hop out of a Fufanu pretty high and get a lot of speed out of a Fufanu and then pump away to go away fast. Now once you've mastered these tricks such as the Fufanu and the tire tap you can move along to you know add such combos you can do Fufanu to ice pick or tire tap to ice pick. Foof to ice is a, is a pretty common one after you've learned tire taps and foofs so after you've stuck the Fufanu up, you're sitting there balancing on the coping. It's a quick movement of just pulling your bars from being pretty straight to going sideways. And then your, your tire will just slide off the coping and straight onto your peg. And then you're into the position of, of the ice pick again. And then you just got to pull it in as in we did earlier on the ice pick. So Foof to Ice is a good one to learn after you've mastered the Fufanu and the ice pick. Yeah. And now if you're really tech, what you can do is you can do the fufanu to ice pick to tail tap, which is pretty difficult, but can be done. Totally. The trick is just, like we said with the fufanu, go up, place your back tire on the coping, then slide to the ice pick like Alistair was saying, and then you lean into the ramp a little bit, and yep. you can pop up to the tail tap. It's definitely a hard trick, but it can be done, and it looks really good. I want to teach you how to do the abubica. Now, if you're like Alistair and you're from the UK, you might call this a blunt. But we call it the abubica in America, so that's what it I'm going to call it. It doesn't matter. Either or, right? Same trick, different name. But, okay, for the abubica, what you're going to want to do is approach the ramp at the same speed you went for the fufanu. Only this time, you're not going to be turning like you did for the fufanu. You're going to go straight up the ramp, place your back wheel on the coping, and pull back into the ramp. Now, when you pull back into the ramp, you don't want to pull back too far because then you'll land flat. You want to pull back in just enough to where your front wheel makes it in below the coping. Make sure that you're going to let go of your brakes as well, otherwise you're going to get ejected out the back, I think. That's right, I forgot about that. Thanks. Yeah, right. And then, so you've got the blunt. From here, we're going to do a, a, front, a front wheel trick. It's a, a toe jam kind of jam your toes in the front wheel and you use your toes as a brake. So you come up, same speed as the tire tap, but you go into your, into your nose dive, stick your toes in the front wheel right behind the back end of the forks there and uh, hop back into the transition and make sure you take your foot away otherwise you're going to get ejected over the front of the bar. Yeah, and sometimes it helps to even get a little bit steeper. It can get a little scary when you're steep up like that, but it makes it easier to pop back into the transition. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you don't pull back on your foot because that'll pull your wheel away and you'll just you'll just fall to your hands on, on the deck. So you should be safe on a toe jam like that. Okay, now moving right along, we're gonna go into the tire slide. Tire slide is pretty much you're going a little bit faster than the double peg, and it's similar to a Smith where 
you're going to want to kick your back end out. But your front wheel is going to be on the face of the ramp close to the coping. And uh, you kind of just lock your brakes up, kick your back end out. And you, you do do a skid. You can either do a skid or you can just let your brake go and you can just slide your wheel along. It does nothing, they're both the same. And then uh, you make sure you don't go too far out because it's going to whip the other way and you're going to end up crashing. You've still got to keep ahead of your back end so it doesn't whip out too far. And then just go down the ramp or you can just pull your back end off and ride it out. Disasters. The disaster can be done one of two ways. Both are good and both will get you by. What do you tell them about the wheel disaster? Okay, well, unlike Alistair, I use my wheels for disasters and he uses his sprocket. But the way I do it with my wheels, I go up, I do a complete 180 on the ramp. And that way, your bike is facing back into the transition. That's when you gotta pop it back forward and get your back tire in. Now, Alistair's gonna explain how to do it while using your, your foot. Same deal, you go up the ramp, 180 just like Chris's. Except for my personal way of doing it, I like to put my front foot on the edge of the coping. And then it's a slightly different move from coming in where you just you bunny hop up and forward and tuck your back end in and then just squeeze it back in down near the coping. It's, it's, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. It's, it's, it's a fun trick either way where you do wheels or you lock it with your pedal. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching this segment of Sports School. Hopefully now you got your grinds and your lip tricks down. So you can take them to the skate park and get absolutely sick on these ramps and just go nuts. And don't forget, if you can't understand a word that Ali's saying, you can always rewind us and watch us again. And if you really need to, you can go to sportsschool.com. And that's with a K, kids. I'm Chris Doyle. Alistair Witten. Thanks for watching. Have fun.